you gotta give it to Apple. They're pretty good at not giving you what you want and then convincing you that what they gave you is what you wanted all along. If you're new on this channel, thanks for stopping by. Just to bring you up to speed on what is going on, I am a self-employed software engineer and an indie app developer. And here I share my days with you guys. However, recently I spilled some coffee on my MacBook Pro and today I finally had to bring in for a service. By the way, a quick shout out to my buddy Sandre who made this Roblox game Beware Zombies all on his own. I've been promoting him with this sticker around town for some time now and I also hope that the service guys take note. My OG viewers know that I live in Oslo, Norway and I like to include a few vlogging shots here and there so I hope you enjoyed that as well. But today, since I no longer have my laptop, I decided for fun to test out iPadOS 26 and see if it could be something viable for me to use. I watched some videos here and there, but I really wanted to see for myself. Also, I'm still testing out the iPhone 17 Pro cameras and all of the shots you're seeing here are filmed with it. Later in the video, I will share with you some fun observations I made today, but overall, it's really a joy to use. It's so much smaller and lighter than any mirrorless camera. So this might just be kind of the return of the OG vlog as well. I don't know. For those of you who have been watching my channel for some time, let me know in the comments if you like this more laid back style of video. My goal today is to try and set up a development environment on the iPad for one of my projects. And on the way here, I researched some options. I remember I used Replit some time ago, but I'm more used to a Visual Studio Code type setup. So I'm going to try GitHub Workspaces, since they do seem to offer a free plan and it's probably going to be more than enough for my project. But that is only if I can make it work on the iPad. And I have a few suspicions that things are not going to be so easy. So with me, I brought the low free keyboard as well. And there are two reasons for that. First, I don't have the full iPad keyboard case because since day one, I thought it would have been a foolish investment. And secondly, I wanted to give the iPad a fair chance because I didn't want the keyboard experience to cast a shadow over what I think of the new OS itself. So with me, I have a keyboard that I'm used to and that I kind of like. And after setting up the iPad, I looked for a way to create a workspace on GitHub. And immediately I noticed how much they pushed the Copilot, which is fine, I guess, but maybe they can use it to fix scrolling first. Nevertheless, I was prepared for such eventualities. So I brought my second most used piece of equipment with me, the trusty old MX Master 3. And then I filled a bit with Visual Studio Code settings. And one thing I was curious about is whether you can install any extensions. It turns out that you actually can, which I took as a good omen. From there, I went on to install Dino itself. I cloned my repository, which wasn't as easy to do because I had to generate another SSH key. But overall, so far, even though I'm constantly getting confused if I should use the mouse or the touchscreen, you can say that I was making progress on setting everything up. And then I started looking into the new features of iPadOS 26. And for one, I really like the implementation of the classic menu bar and I was pleased to see Apple not reinventing the wheel for once. Next up, I installed MongoDB for my project and here, something I found a little confusing is that the GitHub workspaces don't exactly tell you clearly what OS they are running. So I had a few small hiccups here, but I made it work. It turns out it's Ubuntu all along. By the way, a quick sponsored segment helps me pay the bills. So today, a quick word from a startup of our neighbor country, Sweden, Lovable. Lovable is only the second best thing to come out of Sweden right after PewDiePie, but way ahead of Tetra Pak. I'm sure most of you already know, but Lovable allows you to create full stack apps with just a prompt. I tried creating a page where I can list all of the gear that I use for filming, coding and so on, and it worked quite nicely complete with a small admin panel to edit my posts. What I personally like about Lovable is the integrated environment where you can see the changes being made and applied live. However, it's not just a preview because you can make edits to your projects visually from the same interface. And if you're not afraid to edit the code itself, it's also possible right from there. Lovable makes it easy to publish your projects on your custom domains and integrate with Superbase. And it also comes with analytics so you can track how your project is doing. So if you have an idea you'd like to try, check out Lovable using the link in the description and use my exclusive code MarcoYT20 for 20% off. Now back to my existing project. What was really cool was the port forwarding in GitHub Workspaces, which works automatically. And with that, I was able to set up my Google client for authentication. And there it was. 
my beautiful login page. This project, by the way, is something I already use in production and I use it to send emails to my users and for a couple of internal tools that help me manage this YouTube channel. I will share more about it soon, but for now it's in too rough of a shape. It's making me kind of insecure in front of an audience of thousands of other engineers, but I'm working on fixing it. Next up, I tried using the menu bar to tile the windows, which worked decently, but it was getting a bit late in the day. And as a dad, I have to be home in time to make food and such before my daughter comes back from kindergarten. And so with this little encouragement I had from setting everything up, I decided to give the iPad a proper go one more time. But I will tell you right away, things weren't as great the second time around. So a couple days later, on an arguably less beautiful day, I came back here to work. Today we're in a place called Cafe Brennery, which is a pretty well-known chain of coffee shops here, but even with the success they had, they do keep up the quality of their roasted coffee. And also they haven't been raising prices for a long time, which is very commendable in this crazy economy. All right, there's something I want to point out. I literally did not unlock this iPad since I used it a couple days ago, and I hope that when I tap on the Safari icon, I will be brought back to exactly where I left off in my ID and VS Code online, but it didn't happen. Then I tried playing with the window management, for reasons some of you might suspect is a peculiar point of interest for me. And while resizing was pretty smooth, the little flick gesture that all YouTubers love to demo is not reliable. I mean, I expected better, more intuitive gesture handling from the Hair Force One. Next, I wanted to see if changing the system font size would make more room for my split window setup, but it didn't make a noticeable difference. So I just went ahead and then I opened up my sturdy potato workspace and I tried to get some work done. Ironically, you you can see me here hunching over to read stuff because the font size was a little bit small. This would have probably been better if I had one of the larger iPad Pros, but it's worth saying that the resizing action on the split window setup was smooth and something I enjoyed fiddling with. So I went ahead and I started doing some coding. Actually, it's better said that I'm doing a full rewrite because I must admit I vibe coded some parts of this project originally in cursor. And right now it feels like the code was written by someone I don't particularly like or respect, but that's not so important. I'll fix it. Did you notice the flickering lights though. Look closely. Are they really flickering? Look at the reflection on the iPad. So it turns out the lights aren't flickering and it turns out that the tone mapping in the iPhone camera can't decide whether or not to bring the highlights down in this region of the image. So it's bouncing back and forth. It's very entertaining for me as an engineer to see the trickery they employ to enhance the dynamic range of the camera and moreover to see the trickery fail. But anyhow, this is where I continued coding for a little bit and wrestling with the code Claude spit out a couple of months ago. Maybe I should get another job as a vibe coding cleanup specialist. I hear they pay more money now for that than anything. <laughs> but just before I left, I wanted to test a few edge cases with the window management that I, as a developer of a pretty popular window manager for the Mac, have encountered many times. And I wanted to see how Apple handles them. And without going into too much detail, because it can get a little bit dry, I am glad to report that in the end, Apple is doing the right thing, which is to actually look at the current placement of windows to determine whether or not they can be resized together. When implementing a feature like this, which I also did in my own window manager, there are many shortcuts you can take as a developer, but Apple is treating the windows themselves as the source of truth on the screen, and I respect that choice. I'm still confused with some of the gestures though, but I will give them a pass because they did handle the more complicated case of resizing the windows together properly. What I'm also satisfied with is the improved design of the iPhone stand, featuring an added rubber wheel to rest against the screen and protect from scratches and provide additional grip. But after this, I decided to walk all the way home and take a few more interesting shots with the iPhone through some of the old neighborhoods I used to live in. I think the image quality is holding up pretty well, although the iPhone does seem to have a preference for overexposing a little bit, which I manually corrected in the shots that you're seeing now. We are now definitely speed running into the fall with the falling leaves and the weather getting rainier every day, but it's somehow also cozy and inspiring me to sit down and code or do some work. This is my old neighborhood of Grünerlöcke with lots of cozy European architecture and corners to hang around with, which makes it kind of cinematic. But this is all that I've been able to record for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you were able to see firsthand what the iPad OS experience is like if you're a developer and you're trying to set it up for yourself. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe 
it really helps me here on YouTube and I will see you in the next one.